Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of the Learning FreeCAD for Beginners we teach the fundamentals of FreeCAD whilst we learn workflows. Today we're going to be creating this watch face using something called a multi-transform operation in the part design. Now the reason why we're using this type of workflow is because if we look at a watch we have symmetry across both the vertical and the horizontal. So all we need to do is model one part of this and transform it over with a mirror. But if we're using the part design, this can be a bit tricky. The reason being is that if we use a mirror and then mirror this again, we wouldn't be able to do that. The part design doesn't allow for a mirror of a mirror or a mirror of a pattern. It's only subtractive and additive features that can be mirrored in the part design. How do we get around this if we want to use a part design workflow? And that's what I'm gonna be answering in this video. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So in the part design, I'm going to create a new body and I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm first going to rough out one quarter of that watch from the top view. So we're looking at the top profile. So we're going to go on the X, Y plane and hit OK. For this, I'm going to use a circle for the construction geometry. And this is just to get us an idea of the actual diameter of the watch face. So hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and I'm going to click on the circle and use the toggle construction mode. This won't show up when we're modeling. Now we can set the diameter. I'm going to go for 40 millimeters. This is gets us into the basic dimensions for our project. And now we can start sketching. The connection points of where the strut connects to, the lobes are gonna sit around about here. So that's sketch those in. I'm gonna use the polyline. And all I'm going to do is create the top view of that connection point. I'm gonna hit escape, hit escape again to get the mouse pointer back and just place in a vertical constraint there. I've got the auto remove redundance, the auto constraints and avoid redundant auto constraints all checked. So you can see they're constrained straight to this circle here with a point on object constraint. Now let's use the arc, the end point and rim point arc. And I'm gonna go from this point and connect up, and make this tangent to here. I'm gonna do the same with this one connect up and make it tangent. So you can see I'm just touching that line and that places that arc tangent to this construction geometry. Assets and distances away. So I'm gonna say that these two points for the strap connection is at 10 millimeters. I'm gonna set the width of the strap connection at four mil and we'll set the distance away from this point and this point with a length of 25 mil. You can see this point needs to be attached to this vertical line, point on object constraint, and the same for this point as well on this line. So now we're fully constrained. Let's close the sketch and see what we have. So we have this basic template here. This is going to be used as a cutting tool later when we come to do the top profile of the watch. We're now going to take a cross section going across here. So if we lay this flat, looking at it from the side, we need to take a cross section of here and we're going to revolve this around the watch. If this was something like, say, an overwatch, then we'll do the same thing. But we instead of using a revolve, we'll use a sweep along the path. Let's create the profile. So I'm going to create a new sketch and I'm going to go along the XZ plane and hit OK. This has positioned us in the middle of our scene. We can see how our arc goes around and we can use this point as reference. So I'm going to pull in this point. That gives me an idea of where that's going to sit and where our profile is going to sit as well. 
Now let's look at our profile. I'm just going to hit escape, get my mouse pointer back. And I'm going to place one point in here. And this is going to be the height of the profile. So this just gets me in the necessary dimensions for the watch. I'm going to go 10 millimeters. Now I can position this on the screen and start thinking about the profile itself. So this is where your choice of profile comes in. I'm going to create something in here, starting with an arc, and then I'm going to go for the polyline and come down and perhaps down again and across, down to the bottom, across the bottom. And it's just figuring out what the watch would look like if we did a cross section. And we'll finish this by coming across and up and connect up. Hit escape and escape again to get the mouse pointer back. And we need to add some constraints in here. So we're looking at some horizontal constraints, which is there. We'll bring this across a bit and we can start constraining this down. This has got to be vertical, horizontal constraints. And we'll start to make some of these equal. So I'm going to take this one and this one, make those equal. That needs a horizontal constraint. I'm going to place this one, this point here in line with this point. And we can start moving these about just to get the right shape that we need. And we can make this one one millimeter. So it's starting to get some lengths in here. Also can make this one one millimeter, so make those two equal. Height of this five mil. And say this one is three mil. And we're just going through and in some rough dimensions to get this constraint down. Radius. So about three millimeters on the radius as well. Let's make these two equal. Slowly start to constrain this down. Once our sketch is constrained, then we can close and we can see what we have. So we have this sketch to be revolved. So this is the watch profile. And this one is the top guide. Let's revolve this. So click on the watch profile, part design, Add a feature and the revolve. You can see how that's revolved, but we only want 90 degrees. So let's go 90 degrees and take symmetrical to plane off and reverse. We'll place it along here. If I hit OK, we've got our cross section revolved, but we still need to do the arms. Now, there are many ways of doing this by using something like a reverse pocket or modeling this with lofts, we're going to be using a reverse pocket. And this is the reason why I've added this top sketch here. We need to add some geometry onto here to allow for this part. If we revolve around here with that geometry, it molds in nicely. So let's have a look at the revolution coming to that and look at the sketch profile, double click it. And we can see that we've got this part here which we can come out with and connect up to the bottom. And this will create our connection point. But first we need to know the length of this connection. So if we're coming out here, how far it's gonna be out. Let's close that and come back to the top guide. Now you can see we've got a number of dimensions in here. So we need 
to know the length of this as it would be if it was included with the revolve. That's easily done by coming in and adding a circle, coming out, connecting the circle up with the point on circle constraint or point on object constraint and changing this to construction geometry. From that, I can take a measurement. So we're gonna add a point to here, constrain the point to this line, the vertical axis, the point on object constraint. Now can take a length from here to here using vertical distance and change this to reference. You can see it's gone orange. Change that to reference and hit OK. We get a length that we can use. So 8.6531. So I'm going to use that for the length of my feature. Let's close that and come back to the watch profile. Zoom in. And I'm going to place a point here that's a distance away from these two of 8.65. Hit enter. So we've got our distance. Now we can delete this line and add in lines that we need to connect up. So I'm going to go something like this. Connect out that line and we'll place a line in here as well. Hit escape and place the vertical constraint. And now we need to add some more constraints in here. So I'm going to take these two points, keep them in line and set a length in here. Say 1.5 millimeters. And we've just added in some more constraints. And we're back to fully constrained. Let's close that. Now you can see our revolve has changed. Now this is where we create the reverse pocket. We have the top guide here. So if I hover over that, you can see the top guide. I'm going to duplicate that top guide, duplicate selected object, take out the XY plane because we don't need that. We just want the top guide, hit OK. And then make sure that this is inside the body, which it is. This means I can edit this sketch with leaving the other one intact. If we reference the other one in our other geometry, we may get into some problems when we start changing this sketch. So the first thing I'm going to do is come into the sketch and fuse section. And we've got this geometry in here. Let's just delete this one, we don't need it. And also this point. And I'm going to remove the construction geometry as well, because we don't need that. Now I'm going to add some geometry. I can take the line and create a line going all the way up here and connect up. We must keep this symmetrical, so we mustn't go over this line. Because I'm adding new geometry to this, then this is the reason why I've copied it. It's because the other one is referencing that geometry and we may get into some topological naming issues. So I'm just adding the lines in to create this sketch here. Now, this line has to come into here, connect up. And what we've done, if you look, it's quite hard to see, but when we come out of this sketch, we have got basically a cookie cutter here. So we've got this square that connects up and then we've got this bit. So we've outlined this part here. If I hit close and just hide the revolution, we can see what we've got. When we use this in a pocket against the revolution, pressing the space bar just to hide and show that, we're gonna leave whatever is in here. Let's bring back the revolution, click the top guide 001 which we've just edited and use the pocket now let's go through all and because we're pocketing downwards we need to click reverse that's taken the material away from there and you can see what we've been left with so we've got one quarter of the watch let's hit ok and let's have a look see what we've got so we've got this nice feature here now at this point we can do some finishing on here. So we could add, say, 
a fillet just here. You may want to add the holes before you want to do this. So place a hole in here going through to the other side. But I'm just going to add a quick fillet onto here as though we've added that hole. Like so, hit yeah, OK. And the next thing I'm going to do is use the multi-transform in here. The reason why we use multi-transform is that if we use the normal mirror, and this is just for the part design workflow, if I use the mirror in here, let's save this before we do anything else. So that's saved now. You notice that when I've selected these, we use revolution and work our way down the tree view. So we've got the revolution, control click the pocket, control pick the fillet. This means when we do the mirror, we get the revolution first, the pocket, and then the fillet. We can't mirror the fillet on its own. We have to do all those actions as one. So we hit that, we get the mirror of this. If we hit OK, we can't do a mirror of a mirror. So I click the mirror, try to mirror that. You can see only additive and subtractive features can be transformed. This is where, let me just delete that, press the delete key on the keyboard. This is where the multi-transform comes in. This one here, create multi-transform. We again have to select in sequence of how they've been built, the actions or the operations that we use to create this part of the watch. Part design, apply pattern, create multi-transform. What happens when we click it, we get this panel on the left that's asking us to right click to add a transformation. We've got the revolution, the pocket and the fillet within, which is correct. Right click and then we get the different transformations here. So I want to add a mirror transformation. We've got our mirror. Now I like to come down and check that we're on the right plane. So if we go base YZ plane, we've got that one there. If I hit OK, what I can then do without hitting OK at the top is right click again and add a mirror transformation. We can then come down and add a second transformation using say in the base exoplane. And we've got our transformation. If we come up, hit OK. That applies the transformation. And we have our end result. So I hope that's helped you understand the multi transformation and also how you would tackle something like a watch face. Hope you enjoyed these videos and I hope to see you again in the next video. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire, and that's at ko fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.